Hey everyone, so today we'll discuss about my career trajectory so far. So this will begin with uh, what I chose in my high school and what I'm doing as of now. So my current PhD position. And uh, before we get into this, I would ask you to subscribe to my channel. And if you have done that already, then write down in the comment section below that I have subscribed so that I know that you have subscribed. <laughs> and um, let's now get into the career trajectory video. So in all, I thought I would start this from the high school because this forms the basis of what you choose later on in your career. Obviously, it's possible that you can make uh, a lot of changes. Sometimes people switch fields like I did. So I switched from biotechnology to neuroscience and then from uh, molecular neuroscience to cognitive and from cognitive to clinical. So it's a lot of career change. <clears throat> But then that only happens when you already broaden your perspective and you know a lot about the different fields that exist. So if you're somebody who is really early into your career, then I would ask you and urge you to actually do a lot of research to know what are the options that are available to you in terms of career and then decide for yourself how you see yourself in the next five years or 10 years and then see that what type of skill set do you need for that to reach to that position and then you decide what you want to do so that is how you should be actually forming your career trajectory so basically <clears throat> starting at a particular point where you are and then uh, like make a line first and then begin with where you are and then towards the end of the line write what you want to be and then in between just fill what you need so what is the skill set that you need? Does it require a particular degree? Because it, it does not make sense to do a particular degree just for the sake of doing that degree, just for the name's sake. Uh, so I would urge you to do that first and then decide, all right? So concerning my career trajectory, I chose biology and math in my um, high school, so in 11th and 12th grade. I also studied physics, chemistry, English, and general studies, so in all six subjects for two years. And um, I did my um, high school from uh, Chennai, from India. And I also did my undergraduate studies from India, which lasted for four years. So it was an engineering degree that I got, which is called BTEC in biotechnology. So biotechnology is a subject. And I chose medical biotechnology as my elective. So I ended up studying subjects like cancer biology, then stem cell biology, pharmaceutical sciences, protein engineering. Uh, so that was something which uh, uh, really fascinated me and along with that I was uh, working in one of the lab as a student assistant for three years so I was completing when I was completing my uh, bachelor studies I did that simultaneously and that gave me a lot of insight into research especially research in neuroscience although it was more uh, molecular research uh, so more of a molecular neuroscience research but it does not hurt to have uh, an understanding of research in addition to your undergraduate studies. So concerning neuroscience, if you're somebody who's interested in neuroscience, this is the perfect place because I then uh, chose to do my master's in neuroscience from three universities in Europe. So I got into this joint master's in neuroscience program and um, I studied in University of Strasbourg, so in Strasbourg from France, then University of Freiburg in Germany and University of Basel in Switzerland. So in addition to this, our program was very versatile and it allowed us to choose uh, wherever we wanted to do our master thesis. And I decided to do my master thesis uh, from Uppsala University, which is in Sweden. And that was a um, life-changing experience for me because there my supervisor was amazing. And it, uh, along with that, I learned so much in terms of um, large-scale data analysis and also about brain imaging concerning um, the structural brain imaging. So that was something that I wanted to get into. So during my master's, I did a major in cognitive neuroscience from University of Strasbourg. And uh, I got into the research concerning uh, brain imaging uh, during my master's. And the whole program gave us a glimpse of uh, neuroscience in terms of molecular neuroscience, developmental neuroscience. We have subjects like neuroanatomy. So for those of you interested in that particular program, I've made another video on that. So the contents of that program, so you can have um, a look at that particular video. 
so completing after completing my masters i went back to india and then um, i became a certified meditation trainer at the heartfulness institute and i'm mentioning this in my career trajectory because this also forms the basis of my career because my passion for neuroscience is uh, as much as my pa uh, passion for meditation and i really want to combine this in the future so let's see what happens um then i was chosen for this particular phd position that i am in right now so i've completed one and a half year in my phd position so far and um, it's been amazing because i'm learning so many new things involved in clinical trials so i actually study chronic pain and the neural substrates of chronic pain, pain at the level of brain uh, in human beings and uh, this is something that i wanted to get into and through this phd i am studying that so that is quite about it for my career trajectory so far there are a lot of uh, additions which i will tell you later on so maybe an update after six months or a year because i'm also doing some additional courses and i will uh, let you know about those so in all from my career trajectory what you can see is that I switched fields from biotechnology to neuroscience but it's not that hard for those of you who are planning to do similar things uh, think of how you can connect those so I remember somebody actually asked me a question about that they are doing masters in immunology and then they want to switch fields to neuroscience and my take from this is that if if i were you i would probably take up neuroimmunology because if you have a masters in immunology i'm sure you would be good at immunology techniques and you can in order to uh, get into neuroimmunology you just have to translate these techniques of immunology to neuroscience and then learn a bit of theory of neuroscience so this is how you can uh, combine different fields and that is indeed a very good aspect because then you are doing an interdisciplinary um, research and not just uh, focusing on one uh, core natural science so that's quite about it um, I hope this video helps you because often we have doubts about switching fields and uh, we we don't feel that confident when we have to switch fields in fact you have to trust me on this is that my PhD project is very very challenging and when I was taking it up, I was asking myself, should I actually experiment so much on myself? Uh, because that indeed demands a lot from me, but uh, it's been going well so far. And this is what I want to tell you is that if, even though if you are planning to enter into a new field, if you have trust in yourself and if you're confident enough in your capacity to learn, then you should enter into it. Otherwise, if you are not motivated enough and don't trust yourself that much, then I would ask you to stay in the field in which you're more comfortable. So that's quite about it. And I see you later. I hope you enjoyed this video. Bye for now.